I wouldn't call non, uh, it non-core brands, but we have non-core assets. Now we have to reconsider whether our value chain, there's a lot of investment going into our value chain, is still appropriately spent. No? Because we have to invest in the new technologies, in software, in batteries. Uh, and also we have to consider we have some non-core uh, assets where we either we have, uh, we have to develop a business plan forward for growth, for more uh, value, or we have to consider to also to spin off something. Is the sale of Ducati back on the table? Uh, Ducati is uh, not back on the table uh, as a sale. Uh, my background, I have to say, is a little bit also motorcycles. I was uh, in charge of, uh, of a motorcycle brand uh, worldwide for a few years. So I think two wheelers have a future. And we have to decide now what could be the way forward. Would it be a multi-brand strategy? Would it be more electrification? I think two wheelers will play a role in individual mobility. Individual mobility uh, uh, will be our, our driving theme also for the next uh, 10 years or so. So what we have to do now is work on a Ducati forward strategy. And it's no secret that the Works Council was opposed to the Ducati sale when it was taken up by your successor. What did you do to really bring Bernd Osterlo to the table and kind of bury the hatchet, if you will, because it hasn't always been easy with the work. No, council. it hasn't always been easy. Um, but I have to say, no, Bernd Osterlo is, uh, uh, he's for many years in the company and, and he always was as, as head of the works council. He knows the company from inside out, but he's also a very strategic thinker. Yeah? He's also a very strategic thinker. And this is where I think we have, we are quite close in our estimation, how the future looks, what challenges are we facing? And that allowed us finally also to, um, from both sides to agree to a plan, which is, uh, 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 we, we will reduce our, our workforce considerably in Germany, but also allow us to invest in future technology. And uh, I think at the end, uh, Bernd Osterloh's concern is, uh, is uh, how many workplaces now, but how many workplaces we have safe and are future-proof. And there is, I think, we, we, we found an alignment. Just finally, sir, speaking of the future, many saw your appointment as CEO as a way to really put the diesel crisis behind the company. Yet just a few days ago, still news surrounding Porsche and Envy. When are you confident that you will be able to say, it's over, there are no more diesel skeletons oh, in the closet? Be, <laughs> that would be very nice. But we have to, we have to if, if you look uh, reasonably at this, we have so many uh, still uh, um, problems around the world which needs to be need to be sorted. We have lost so much trust in uh, uh, with some of our customers, though that will require a few more re years that we really can say we have left diesel behind. That will we have to dedicate resources and time also for the foreseeable time. The company still requires a lot of change, uh, cultural change. Uh, I think we have we have uh, monitor uh, uh, Larry Thompson, uh, which is advising us. I think it's it's helpful for us. It's really uh, it's a good exercise, and uh, he will help us to to become. A, a, a more future-proof uh, company, much more compliant than we have been. So there's a lot to be done. Um, uh, still many months to, to go through until we can say bye-bye uh, diesel. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.